uh, you know, I, griping. That'll take care of your griping. You know, that'll take care of that, that, that sign. Oh, how about a rejoice? How about rejoicing? Ha! Ha! Because, uh, you, you got to, you, you doing enough to get the devil's attention to want to mess around with you. Who we? Yeah, because see, if you didn't amount to much, he wouldn't, he wouldn't even be, you wouldn't even be in his radar. I say, if you didn't amount to much, you wouldn't be in his radar. See, when you, 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 when you're in, when you're in battle, I know, so I know about battle. I was taught battle. You, you looking for the greatest enemy. And that's what you, that's what you zero in on. You don't bother with the little guy that ain't, that ain't going to do you no harm. You want somebody that's going to do you harm. So count, how about a little rejoicing that you've been counted worthy to suffer? That you've been counted worthy to walk this thing out? Ha ha. Stand your ground. Yeah. Stand your ground. Get a few battle scars. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You know, when you see a you see a you see a, a veteran, yes, and you see all them. So I seen some veterans. Man, they got so much stuff on their chest. It goes all the way up across the shoulder. Yeah. Boy, he been he got some bell scars. Yes. All them ripples on his chest. Yeah. They're not just that. There's, there's bell scars that go with that. Ah, yeah. right. glory to God forevermore. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I watch it. I check them out yeah. when I see them fully dressed. And they got stuff, I seen them, I seen stuff already, almost wrapped around the shoulder. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know they got bell scars. How about you? You got any bell scars? Oh, you got, all you've been doing is whining. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh, glory to God forevermore. Rejoice because you're fighting. Rejoice because you're fighting. Fight the good fight. Ah, it's a good fight. He said, God said, fight the good fight. That means I'm winning. I'm, I'm winning. I'm winning. I'm winning. I'm winning. I'm winning. I'm winning. Dear God, that, that's God I'm winning. I had a pastor friend of mine when I talk, every time I talk to him, he said, I'm winning. He said, I'm winning. I said, me, that's me too. I'm winning. Bless God. I'm, I am winning. I'm, winning. I'm, winning. I'm not losing. I'm winning. I'm winning. I'm, I'm winning, dear God. So just, I would just be encouraged. You know, this, it ain't over. And the bell ain't over yet. bell ain't over yet. We still with it. But, but, I, but I tell you what, I'm running this thing. Run patiently the race that's set before you. You know, when at the end of, you know, we, we, you know, we, we, we have the opportunity to, to give people their send-off from time to time. And you know, there are people that have a wonderful, they have a wonderful send off because they have a wonderful track record that they left. What kind of track record are you setting? See, the time you set, the time to, 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 to establish your track record is now. Now is the time, you know, you know, you know, establish your track record now. Yeah, run this thing through. Be stand, be strong. Be strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might. Rest in your hope fully upon the grace of God. That's brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Don't trust yourself. Don't trust the flesh. Can't trust it. Trace the flesh will cave in in the middle of a fight. It'll turn tail and run. In the middle of a fight. But bless God. Bless God say, I don't trust the flesh. Can't trust him under pressure. Cannot trust the flesh under pressure, boy. He fold, he fold on you. Yeah, he came in on you, man. Yeah. Yeah, but I trust the grace of God. And that's what the word says. Rest your hope fully upon the grace of God that's brought unto us at the revelation of Jesus Christ. When Jesus was revealed unto you, the grace of God was made, made available to you. Rest your hope fully in that. Don't trust your flesh, dear God. I don't care what you think you can do. Don't trust it. But rest your hope fully in the grace of God. And you'll always be in victory. Always. You will always. You will win them all. Out of them all, God delivers you. Not a one. 
out of them all. I like those scriptures like that. Out of them all, I have been delivered. All I'm doing is walking out of what I've already been delivered out of. It's, isn't that good? I go in the ring, the fight's been, I have the, I have the end results. I can, I can when, they, when they walk, when they shake hands in the ring, I can hold my arm up. Because that's where it's going to be at the end of it. Amen. I said, it's a, it's, a fix. it's a fix. Is that a fight fixed? Yes. The fight is fixed. It is. I'll tell you right up front, it's fixed. Yeah, it's fixed. Jesus fixed it. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. It's a fixed fight. Yeah, yeah. I'm, uh, that's over. It's over. Well, bless God. Let's just. Praise God. Let's just stay with it. Bless God for everyone. Well, let's look at the Word. The Word of God is what has brought me safe thus far. Yes. And the Word of God will take me on. Yes. I didn't come this way on, on human effort. That's right. And you didn't come to where you come to on human effort. Yes. It is by the grace of God and yes, by sir. faith in the Lord Jesus Christ that has brought you to Amen. where you are. Amen. And, and faith come by hearing. Yes. So you just, need to, you just need to keep winning. So you got to stay with the word. That's why we. That's why. That's why the word is is first, in all of our assemblies. It's the word of God because without the word, there's there's no there's no victory. There's no nothing. Amen. So the word. So let's let's just look at the word of God. We're looking at uh, the subject of uh, the abolishment of death. We've been talking about the fact that death has been abolished, and uh, we want this to be presented to you in a realistic sense where it will make a difference in the way that you conduct yourself. As you get a revelation of the truth in reference to death being abolished, it will change the way you think. And your experiences around death, and, and, and it will, will be different. And it, you're going to pay a price for this, I tell you that right now, because you know, you're going to be looked upon in, by the natural minds that there's something wrong with you. But don't worry about it. That's common among the believers. They, they thought something wrong with Jesus, so don't worry about it. See, you know, they asked him, who are you? Who do you think you are? And all that. You remember, I'll just read the, read the gospel. And he was asked all that time, time to time. You know what I mean? Get mad at him. They got too mad at him when he would say who he was. Well, as you begin to be conformed to the image of Jesus, spirits are the same today as they were when Jesus was walking on the earth. Amen. And people, will, they'll, they'll think that you're going to think, who do you think you are? Or you are hard. You cold. But don't worry about it. I'm liberated. I'm free. Yes. Praise God. And so let's look at this, uh, and let's let God talk to us out of his word. And I, I, always, I always let the word do the talking. I always let the word do the talking. And uh, that keeps me safe and keeps me moving forward, doing what I'm supposed to do. Death has been abolished. Second Timothy chapter 1 and verses, 1, verses 10 of that text reads like this but has now been revealed by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who has abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Now, the gospel, which is God's word, good news, the another word for gospel is what? Good news. It's good news. So everybody likes good news. So the good news is now, now, hear me and see, you got to take this for, you got to take God at his word. That's right. yes. The good news is that death has been abolished. Amen. Now, now I don't know about you, baby. If, if, if you have made religion out of the word of God, this won't mean a thing to you. Amen. But if you're looking for life and a way and means to elevate and to draw nearer to God and to live, then it's exciting to you. It is to me. He says the good news, yeah, the, gospel, the good news, because this, this, this is through the gospel, through the, the good news is what is saying this to me right now. Yes. Amen. This is the word of God. Good news right. says that death has been abolished. And so what does it mean? What does a, here, abolished is, is not a complicated term. We use it in our culture, society all the time. 
But to abolish simply means to do away with, Amen. to put an end to, to destroy completely. Amen. Can you, did you know that death had been completely destroyed? Amen. Amen. The death had been put away. Yes, death, death, an end has been put to death. And so, 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 so what has been abolished? What, well, what is death? Well, death, we determined that death is simply separation. That's all death is. That's what the word death means. When we look at, when you go back to your, you go back to your concordance and any major dictionary, uh, it'll tell you what death means. It means separation. To die to something, to separate from it. Something is separate. To die to something is to separate from it. So when it comes to death, of the human body, mm -hmm. the spirit, you are a spirit being. We all know that by now. Amen. So death of the human body simply is the separation of the spirit from the body. Right. I don't see, that, to me, there's nothing to cry about. Amen. Now, now I know how, I know, I know I'll get flack about this. I know that. I don't even, so I don't care. I'm, I've hardened myself. You know what I mean? But, 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 to separate from something, when the, the spirit separates from the body, that is not a sad thing. Now, listen to me, because see, we, 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 we change when we get revelation. Let me show you God's perspective of body and spirit separated. See, it's, it's the, the drama that, that we experience in that, in that arena is, 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 is a little bit more than we, we, we need to encounter. We, we don't have to do that. We don't have to encounter. Now, if you want to do it, you, got a right, you can kick up all you want. You, know what? You're not, you won't go to hell for kicking up. You, you can. You, no, really. But the more knowledge you have about something, the more understanding you have about it. And I'm, 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 I'm supposed to, I've been called to show you truth from the Bible. This is not my philosophy. This is not my thinking. This is God's word. Amen. That's why I just read the scriptures. All I'm doing is reading scriptures to you. Now, here's what heaven says about it. Here's what God says about this. This body, what do we say death is? Separation. Human death is separation. And so when we talk about uh, the, uh, the, the death of the human body, we're talking about the spirit. Do you believe that you're a spirit being? Yes. Yes. Do you believe that the, the, your body is, is, is one thing and your spirit is something else? Yes. You are born again a spirit being. You, you, the real you is the one that's going to live forever. Now, I know that the way we think, we think that I'm something. This is it. Th this is not it. I'm, I'm here to announce to you that the spirit you is far, far more valuable than the physical body. The physical body is nothing. The scripture makes it very clear that the body without the spirit is dead. The body needs me to live. I don't need my body to live. Please understand that. I do not need my body to live. I need my body to operate in a legal manner here on the earth in this, in this natural realm. But I don't need it to live. I'm alive without my body. Amen. But my body without my spirit will decay and go back to dust, to nothing, to dirt, and where it comes. And so understanding that, then I, I, have, I develop a new way of thinking. I have a new perspective on this thing. I have, I'm in my body now because there is a purpose for me being inside of this body on the earth. I, I, we, the, the, the earth is a natural environment, mm -hmm. and God designed it, and it's good. Mm -hmm. yes, 
but it's very subordinate to the spirit world. The spirit world is superior. And I know this is kind of hard to, to, to a man because of the way, you know, because of our natural thinking. The spirit world is far superior to the natural world. And it's more real than this one. Amen. Because the things that are seen are temporary. They're temporal. The things that are not seen are eternal. If you, look at, if, you look at, if you look at a person, just a human being, look at a person, well, if, what they, if they get 100, they're doing good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Come on, well, what they just poof, they show up and all poof and just gone? No. Who are we? Are we sons of God? Amen. So do we just show up and then just become nothing? No. 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 I'm, I'm my, part of my Existence is to spend time on this earth, a window of time, which is a very, very small, minute part of me. I'm way bigger than what you see. And so I'm, I'm, uh, so I'm here for a purpose. God has put, placed me on this planet. God placed me here on the planet. I'm here. I'm doing what I'm called to do. This is not the beginning or end of me. This is just a stop off in a sense of speaking. And that's really what it is. In, in comparison to eternity, this is just like a pit stop. God said that a thousand years with him is like a day. A thousand years with us is like a day with him. Wow. Whew. A thousand years? What happened? What, where were we at a thousand years ago? 1018? What was that? Well, what, what was in 1018? I don't know. I don't know what. I haven't even read history about 1018. <laughs> you, you follow what I'm saying? But that's like a, a day to God. That's what he said. In comparison, you know, to, to me, a, a thousand years with us is like a day with him. So what, what's with this? What, who, who, what's with this? Hurry, business? Hurry up! Hurry up! Wow! When you understand this, begin to re. When you, you when you understand the word of God, now your thinking begin to change. Your thinking begin to change. You, you see yourself different. I see myself different. The more I learn about God, the more the different more I see myself different. I see things, I see things in a different light. And so the things that we are so that, that we get worked up about, you know what I mean, over the fact over something that's that's abolished, death has been abolished. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Death has been abolished. So it so the wages of sin is death. So if death has been abolished, then can't be no sin. Now I notice here's another one that I just I noticed this hard on the flesh. Because that's just like having crime, but you got rid of all your jails. You know, we 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 we, we okay, we 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 go dynamite all the jails, no more jails. But you got crime, where are you gonna put your criminals? So if you get rid of the jails, you gotta get rid of your criminals too. You got to get rid of both at the same time. Because if you got if you got criminals and no jails, you got nowhere to put them. If you got jails and no criminals, you got nowhere. To, you don't need them. Death. The wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. So if death's been abolished, if death's been done away, if death's been completely moved or got done away with, then there can't be no sin. Well, that's right. And, and I'll show you all this. But, 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 but back up to what I wanted to show you here out of Philippians. Heaven has a different perspective. God's has a, God has a different perspective on body-spirit separation than we. And it's because we, we are coming out of the death setting. We are coming out of the death. God never, he was never there. 
We are coming out of the death setting, so we are death-minded. Mm. Right. And the fear of death still has the stain on us. And so it knocks the tar right out of us. And blue Joseph, when you hear about it, oh, God. Well, we've been that way all our lives because you know, we, all our lives we were, you know, we were subject to death until we, until we found out that we had been, that death had been abolished. See, this becomes a reality to you when you find out about it. If you don't know about this, death is still raging. And people are still suffering the consequences of it. But faith in God delivers you from it. See, is death working in there? Yes, it is working. Why? People are allowing it to work. You have not received eternal life. And so for them, death has not been abolished. That's why they fuss with you. And so that's why we preach this and teach it to deliver people from the pains of death. And the results of, 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 of death. Otherwise, you wouldn't, wouldn't be no need. That's the purpose of teaching it. Yes. To deliver you from it. See. See, Jesus has, he has done this. He has, he has, dear God, he, he has done all this, but we didn't know about it. In Hebrews 2, and I'm just, there's so much to this, it's just all over the Bible. Hebrews 2.14, Inasmuch then as the children have partaken of, partake of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same, that or so that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is the devil, and release those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. People are still subject to bondage because they don't know that Jesus has abolished death. And they're all not in the streets. They're in church. Going to church weekly and don't know that death has been abolished and they're still, they're still under the bondage of death. Did you see that scripture there? And he, he has released those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. People that are still going to church and they are subject to the bondage of death. Wow. Right there. Wow. That's why I'm teaching this. That's why, that's why you got to teach it. So uh -huh. to, to, to they can know that they've been released. Yes. Yes. Wow. You've been released from that. Yeah. Yeah. But if nobody don't preach it and teach it, then people are still there and they'll live all their lives that's right, sir. That's right. subject to the bondage of death. This has been abolished. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. It's been abolished. Amen. Jesus has abolished death and has released me from the fear yes. of death. I did not give you a spirit of fear. Amen. You want to scare the tar out of somebody, tell them you're going to kill them. <laughs> scare the tar right out of them. Didn't bother Peter. No. Herod said, I'm going to take your head off, dude. He went to sleep. <laughs> Come on, you know this. Is, see, I don't, know, I don't know what we think. I, I, don't know what, I don't know if we think we're reading Shakespeare or what. Uh, this is the Bible. Yes, it is. Yes. I'm going to kill you. Now, he know he wasn't joking because he just killed James, you know. Right. So he wasn't joking. I'm going to kill you. This guy goes to sleep. <laughs> What's with that? You know why he went to sleep? Because by the power of Holy Spirit living inside of him, he knew that he had been released from the bondage of death and it didn't bother him. Right, right. You understand? Do you see what we're talking about here, people? See, see, we have preached a gospel. We have preached a very shallow gospel. We have preached a shallow gospel and it, it, it was okay while we were at church and clapping. But then soon we step out that door, bam, got your back. 
Rebbing in bondage, rebbing in bondage, talking death, living death, and doing everything else. Just like a heathen, just like an unbeliever. You know it's the truth. You know it's the truth. Just as scared and frustrated and mad and just everything else, just like the unbeliever. So much of that, right? Right in the ch church, church, church. I don't want to. I don't want to be a part of a church like that. Amen. I want to. I want, either either we're going for the whole hog, or we ain't going for none at all. So I, I'm going to do my part. I'm going to teach it. I'm going to teach it and live it. Yeah. And if, if you want to get in on it, just come on. You'll get free. Yeah. But death has been abolished. Praise God. God's heaven. I wanted, to show you, I wanted to show you heaven's perspective of this. Because heaven, heaven doesn't think about this like the way we do. Philippians, Philippians 1, 121. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. What? For me to die, for me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. To separate from the body is better, is gain. Come on. Do you see this? Come on. Mm -hmm. you can, <coughs> if you hang around unbelievers, you're going to stay just like that. They, they don't talk like that. They, they, don't, they, they don't know what you're talking about. They're going to they're gonna be offering condolences to you before you die. I'm telling you, people, I'm telling you. We, we got a lot of work to do. We, we got a lot of work to do. We, we, I'm t Listen, when I say we, I mean me, we. We. I'm, 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 not, I'm, I'm not out of the pot. I'm, I'm in the pot with everybody else. That's why God is talking to us. He's not, just, he's not talking to you. He is talking to us. When, me, you, and I. He's talking to us. I, I'm not, I'm, I, I, you know, we must receive God's revelation Amen. on the fact that death has been abolished and we must allow our minds to be renewed. Right. Amen. Now watch this. You see, when you, when you have been locked in a mold, mm -hmm. if you do something different, you will feel, feel even funny. Mm -hmm. true. Somebody come and tell you, so-and-so so died, and what's the first thing you want to say? Oh, I'm so sorry. And we, we're conditioned to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we're, conditioned to, we're conditioned to do certain things. Somebody bring you a picture of a little newborn baby, you go, wow, hey! <laughs> Why? We're conditioned to do that. Because the world does the same thing. Right, right, right. They do the same thing. Right. Do we ever do anything different from the world? Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm offering my, I want to offer my condolences. What is that? What's condolences? And what is that? Maybe I need to look that up. What's condolences? Yeah. Offer my sympathy. Mm. What for? That's not in line with the scriptures. Now, come on. Come on. See, I know, listen, I know this is tight. I know it's tough. It's not in line with the scriptures. For me to live is Christ. And to, dip, and to separate from my body is gain. Yeah. So you'd rather lose than gain? <laughs> Come on. But if I live on in the flesh, this will mean fruit from my labor. This will be helpful. Now, this is, this is a real uh, it's a conversation here. It's, and it's wonderful. Paul has come to a point in time when he's, uh, hmm, I'm about ready to bail out of here. Now notice who is making the decisions. He, he is, not, 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 not the devil, not death. Death's not making this decision. Oh, when your time comes, you out of here. God, how many times you heard that one? Oh, when your time comes. <laughs> God already told me. God said, he said, with long life, I will satisfy Amen. you. No. That's right. I think we need to spend time mimicking God mm -hmm. rather than mimicking the culture around us. If, if, if God's going to satisfy me with long life, does that mean that I just, I'm just living, ducking the hatchet every day? 
No. He talks about length of days and long life. Honor your mother and your father so you can live long on the earth. I will satisfy you with long life. Long life. Satisfy who? He didn't say, I'm going to satisfy me. He said, I'm going to satisfy you. Praise God. Praise God. It's your call. Amen. Why don't we preach that? Why don't we teach that? It's your call. Yes. I'm, I'm looking at this right here. It's your call. It's your call. Yes. According to the word. Right. Now, we worried people. We worried folks. Oh, I'm worried. Yeah. Are you? Yeah. <laughs> But if I live on in the flesh, this will mean fruit from my labor. So if I live and if I stay here, I can, I can, I'll, I'll have more time to help you and I can, I can help you develop and grow. What I, watch this, watch this. The rest of that verse. Yet, what I shall choose. Is that right? No, what God will choose. No, I got eye in my Bible. Now, come on. See, I think sometimes we read too fast. What I shall choose, I cannot tell. I haven't made up my mind yet. I haven't made up my mind yet. See, you are established by your words. Amen. Now, how do we know the will of God? We know the will of God by the word of God, what God has said. Now, God lives in a spirit world, and we live over in the natural arena. God communicates with us by way of word. He is a spirit. Spirit and flesh don't connect. They, they, you've got to have a crossover. There's a, we have a soul. It's a crossover. It's a bridge between God and man. Your intellect, your mental realm. That's, right. That's a bridge between the spirit world. How do we talk? How do we interact with God's in the spirit world. We're in the natural world. Well, how do we communicate? There is a bridge. Yes. It is your, it is the call of the soul, the soulish part of you. Your emotions, your intellect, your thinking, your mind. And so how does, how do, if I want to know anything about God, I can't see him, I can't feel him, I can't taste him, I can't, I can't do none of that. How can I know what he's thinking? How can I know his will? How do I know what he wants me to do? How can I know? His word will tell me. I go to his word, I have beady, I have eyes, they're not beady. I have ears, Amen. and so that's a natural part of me that connects with this word and then brings it into that, bring it on, and it comes on the bridge of my mental arena, and then from there, it goes from there into my spirit. That's where God is. Yes. Ah, communicated. Okay. How does God communicate with me? How does God know my will and my desire? God know my will and my desire the same way I know his will and his desire. He know my will by my words. I know his will by his words. Yes. Yes. After all, God's on the spirit world. He don't have a meat mouth like you. He's a spirit. So how's he going how's, how's to know what I'm thinking? How's he going to know what my desires are? How's he going to know what my will is? He's going to know by what I say out of my mouth the same way I know what he wants out of, he says it out of his mouth and I have it written. Yes. Amen. See that? Yes. So, so, we, so we're, it's a constant communication. What do, you think, what do you think prayer is all about? He hear your words. So if you're talking, so whatever, whatever you are saying, that is exactly what he's going to give you. If you're scared to death, you're scared to death. 
That's what he knows. That's what you said. Did he tell you that death and life is in the power of your tongue? He can only do and know about you what you say. That's right. Amen. If you talk about your bad feet, he said, well, that boy got bad feet. Yeah. That's right. And he walks around bad feet all the time. That's, right. That's what he gets. Wow. That's what he says. That's right. Amen. Well, what does God say? Do you do what do you, what, what do you do in reference to your relationship with God? You do what he says. Amen. I know, I know that God loves me because he said it in his word. Now, how is he going to know whether I love him or not? By my words. How can he know? How? Okay. See, see we, we, we misunderstand. We, we just think God just got everything. No, no, it's not the way you think. The only thing God can know about you is what you say. Now, that may be hard. Some of this might be hard on your face because we, we, we have misunderstood. We misconstrued it. We, we, have, we just missed, missed a whole lot. We think, just think God just... This world just, just got everything and just, just, just do whatever he wants to do. He can't do that. He wouldn't be God. If that's what he did, he would, do, he would have to do the same thing for everybody. Amen. He can only do for you according to your will. Wow. He won't override that. I, I can only do for God according to his will. Amen. Whatever his will is, that, well, what is his will? His will is his word. That's right. When it comes to God, what is my will so far as God is concerned? My words. Amen. His will is, my will to God is my, they are my words. What is God's will to you? His word. Whatever he says, that's his will. His will and his words are one and the same. Amen. Praise God. My will and my words are one and the same. That's why you just can't go throwing words around. And I remember he talked to us about just throwing words around and you, you give an account of everywhere. Well, that's right. You've got to give an account. You've got to give an account. That's you, you said it. God give, it. God give an account of what he says. God is responsible for what he says. You are his son. You've got to be responsible for what you say. Now you can see why you just can't go saying anything. You'll get the Bible said angels hearken to the voice of our words. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, how would how would you, everybody use everybody in this room is has something different? If God just threw a blanket out there, everybody in this room would have the identical same thing. We'd have, we, everybody in this room would have the exact same amount of money. We'd, have the, we'd be driving the exact same car. We'd be driving the exact same If God just threw a blanket out there. No. Everything you have, everything you have, everything you represent is a result of your mouth. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Dominion. God can't know. How can he know? How can he give you anything except what you say? Yes. 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 See, we, we, have, we have had the strange idea, okay, God, whatever you want for me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's not right. No. No. Or whatever God wants. Yeah. Come on. That's like walking in the store and the guy giving you whatever he wants to give you. No, you walk in the store, you get exactly what you order. Or you get out of there. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. Why do we say, we think God is, oh, we just, oh, God just, oh, whatever God wants me to have. <laughs> but you see, we've been programmed, we've been programmed to think like that. And God said, no, that's not right thinking. You better get your mind renewed. He said, you'd be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You, you come to my word. I am God. I set the stage. I set the standards. And you come to my word and you find out about me and how I do business through my word. 
and now you will know how to do business. Yes, I'm God. Uh-huh. He said, I'm God. You, you, you don't know. You find out from me. Amen. And I, what I'm telling you, then you learn. See, that's why God said, listen, whatever you bind on earth, heaven says amen to it. Amen. Well, what else can heaven do? Bind what they want to, what heaven wants to bind? Well, if heaven's going to bind what heaven wants to bind, everything would be bind if everybody have the same binding. Right. You know everybody don't have the same binding. That's right. That's right. So, so, but we think that, well, whatever God wants. No, that's not the way it is. God knows your will by your mouth. Amen. Praise God. Just like you know God's will by his mouth. God said, my word that goes forth out of my mouth, they will not return to me void. Yes, Amen. They'll accomplish what I please, and they'll prosper where to I send them. So you take my word. Now, I'm listening to you. You say what you want. When God told Adam, he said, go. He said, he brought the animals up there and said, you got it. Well, well, well God, God didn't tell Adam, no, you can't name him. No, whatever Adam called him, that's what it was. It's whatever he said. Whatever Adam said, God said, that's what Adam wants to be called, wanted to be called. When it, and Adam said, do God said, that's, God found out what Adam wanted. <laughs> he found out Adam wants that to be a dog. And heaven signed off on it as a dog. Because that's what Adam said. God didn't say it was a dog. Adam said it was a dog. And God said, and it's been a dog ever since. Wow. <laughs> Come on. At whatever, what, so God knew what Adam wanted yeah, right. by what Adam said. We know what God wants by what God says. That's right. Don't you see Amen. the mutual relationship here? Yeah. That's the relationship that we have with him. Amen. Praise God. He's given us that relationship. And so God, he, he loves us so, but, but, he don't, but he only know if you love him by what you say. He already said he loved me. So now, but he doesn't, he didn't put no law in there, rule that said I must reciprocate him. I have a will that nobody, God himself, will not override. He'll let me say whatever I want to say. That's why he, you know, that's why he let folks cuss. You want to cuss? He can cuss. You can cuss. Yeah. God won't stop you from cussing. Right. I never seen him stop anybody from cussing. Right. I wish he would, but he won't. <laughs> you want to cuss? Cuss. Yeah. You're going to get cussing too. That's what you say. That's what you say. Whatever, what you say, that's what you will have. Otherwise, what is he going to get? You walk into Wawa. You say, can I have this candy bar? That man or woman is going to reach it and take that candy bar and give it to you, and you're going to give them money for it. They're not going to go there and get, a, get something else that you didn't order. They're going to give you exactly, what else can they give you? What else can God give you except what you order? It won't be right. You ordered a bad foot. So you talk about your bad foot, and that's a bad foot. It's a bad, but, 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 no, no, I, I heard of it. He's been saying it ever, ever since I knew him. He's been saying it. I, God knows it. I know everybody else knows it. He's got a bad foot. He ordered that thing. I don't know how long he ordered it to go, but he got a bad foot. That's right. Now, come on, people, but you don't know how true that is. You know, my sciatica. It's acting up. Well, your sciatica is acting up. Yeah. And every time you see your sciatica going to be acting up. Right. Why? You ordered it. What else can God give you? That's right. That's just like walking in a while I said, give me a Pepsi and he give you a 7-Up. No. Nah, nah. If you order Pepsi, you're going to get a Pepsi. Amen. That's right. That's, that, that makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. You, you, you went and all, you, you. Oh, my rheumatism is acting up today. Of course it's going to act enough. Because you ordered it. What? Come on. 
It would God. It wouldn't be right if God gave you something besides rheumatism. That's right. Amen. But you don't know how true that is. That's the truth. Amen. You have what you say. Amen. What else can you have? That's right. Yeah, what you say. Just you know, you, you go in the computer. A lot of people shop shop Amazon. You go on your computer and you order something from Amazon, and but you're expecting something else. You order the red sweater from Amazon. Now you're wondering why you got a green. You're not gonna get a green one. You're gonna get a red sweater because that's what Amazon knows. That's that's your will. Your desire is to have a red sweater. They're not gonna send you a green one. Well, why do you think God's going to change, change your order? See, we say, and then we expect God to change our order. You know. You know, you, you, whatever you got, you know what I mean? You're talking about it, telling God that's what you got. You know what I mean? And you want him to change it. You want to change your order. He's like, well, like, no, how can he do that? Because now if he changed your order, he got to change everybody's order. You're not gonna, no, no, that's not the way he do business. So you will, you will have what you say. If you treat death like it's still death, you're going to get the results of death. What, you can't get anything else. But God is telling you from his side of the aisle, death has been abolished. Now you can go back to the drawing board and make some decisions about that. And then I'll know what decision you made by what I hear at your mouth. Amen. If you still offering condolences, you're going to always have the offering condolences. <laughs> and it's going to seem perfectly normal. Yeah. Well, what else, can God, what, what, what else can you have? See, Now, I found, God, I found something else. God told me something else. You know what I mean? Now, you, you, you can, when, you, when you make orders from God, when you release your will... You can release your will based on God's will. Now, God has said every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. When you order a gift, how do you want your gift? Do you want your kind, what your, your idea of a gift? Or do you want God's idea? Gifts of God is every good, is everything is good and perfect from him. If you want a secondhand gift, then you order a secondhand gift. No, no, I'm telling you. No, but, but watch this. If you go order a secondhand gift, then that's what you're going to have. You have to get that. You can't get it. You're going to get if you, if you, if you If you go rent that bargain right, that's what you're going to bring home. No, come on. I'm, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. What else can you bring home? You, you, can't bring, you cannot bring anything else home because you left home planning to go to that bargain right. No, no, I'm, I'm telling you. Now, 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 now you see why people stay in bondage. Now you see why people stay in bondage. You got people, you know people right now that's been going to church all their lives and are no better off than it was 20 years ago. Because their mouth, they've been making the same order. If you walk in a restaurant and you order chicken dishes, that's what you're going to get. You're not going to get steak. That's right. Because you didn't order steak. Well, why do you think you want to get something that's different from God? Everybody around you, everybody around you knows this is what you say. This is what you say. You talk and you talk. Whatever, your mouth is the level of your life. Amen. Amen. Wow. Your mouth determines the quality and level of life that you live. Wow. Angels listen to your words. Yeah. They, are, they are God's agents. Yeah. That's why God knows every word that proceeds out of your mouth. And his response is to your words. Angels, many of them. They are ministering spirits sent forth by God to minister. The 103rd Psalm, this 20th standard says, the, the angels, of, they hearken unto the voice of the word of God. They hearken to the voice of God's word. When your words are in line with God's words and you're, 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 you're speaking life, they hear that and then that's what you get. See, oh God, see, come on, understand this. How do we live? 
The just shall live by Okay. Flip the coin over. How does God live? By faith. Because he doesn't live by see, touch, and feel. Because he's a, he's a, God's in the spirit realm and you're in the natural realm. God lives by faith in your words just like you live by faith in God's words. Better get that. No, see, we 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 didn't mis we didn't misunderstood we didn't we, we have mis been misunderstanding God we've been misunderstanding. God, that's why people are that's why otherwise that's why you you couldn't be anything else. That's why you are what you are because God lives by faith in your words. You live by faith in God's words. Now. When we see Jesus as he is, once we have separated, once we see him face to face, spirit to spirit, it'll be a different ballgame. Ah. But as it is now, there's a bridge between the spirit world and the natural world. And God's gonna, not going to cross over here and you see him standing there looking like, you see him, no, no, no. And you're not going to cross over there. And he see you standing over there. Right. Now, we're not talking about exceptional cases. God does, not, does exceptional things. You know, he has a right to do that. He's God. But I'm talking about general opera, everyday operation. Did you, know, uh, did you know miracles is not the best? Now, we think so. Miracles is when God come over here and show up over here. Uh, that's not faith. That's not your faith. God has orders. He said the just shall live by faith. Mm -hmm. But he, he has a clause in that that he gives him a, he, he has a clause in, in the system to allow him to do what he wants to do as he will. Notice the Bible says, in fact, the term the Bible uses, the gifts of the spirit operate as the spirit wills. Mm -hmm. So God, here it's legal. Mm -hmm. But we think, God, come over here and grow your foot back. You think, wow, that's a miracle. <laughs> no, no, you slow. That's, that's proof that you're slow. And God, had to, he had to come over here and show up over here just to get your attention. Yeah. See, we want, we want, I want to be instantly, I want money. I want it to be, I want it supernaturally instant. I want it healed right now. No, that's not faith. Faith is to believe and then it conforms to what you believe. Well, this is why many fail with God, because God's faith worked the same way on that side as our faith worked on this side. When you, when you, when, when we, you say something, then God's faith goes to work on it, and it's the change starts to take place. Just like when you make a request from that side, your faith goes to work on it, and it, 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 it comes to pass. It's not, it's not boom. And so it, 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 it grows into that. And that's, that's okay, this is like, how would you like to give birth to a 21-year-old? No, that ain't right. That ain't right. No, you give birth to an infant. And then over a period of 21 years, that infant become a 21-year-old. Wow, isn't that better? They're just trying to have, I want it right now. Well, that's just about what you sound like when you say, I want it right now. See, come on, it don't work like that. You don't want, you can't handle it right, right, right now. This is to sound that way. You develop into that. Watch this. I, I have learned enough to know this. If I had at 21 what I have now, I would have been a total nut. I, I, would be, I, would be, I would be a nut. I wasn't prepared for my, the life that I presently have, uh, 21 years old, 21 years old, well, I was not ready for this life at 21 years old. But I developed and grew. My faith brought me to where I am now, and it's not a problem. You see what, you see what we're talking about? So, so this, this, Hey, I want it right, right now. This, this temper tantrum, right now, right now. No, that's not the way it works. It doesn't work like that. And even want God to just show up. Hey, God, where are you? Where is God? Where is God? <laughs> <laughs> you 
He's the same place he's always been. He's a faith God. You think he would require you to do something that he doesn't do? He loves you, don't he? He requires you to love. Well, he, requires, he wants me to walk in faith, doesn't he? Well, you think he don't walk in faith? You, you see what I'm talking about to say? He walks in faith too. Do you know what raised Jesus from the dead? God didn't zap Jesus out of that hole. I know people think so. They think God just zapped him out. Do you know how Jesus rose from the dead? Faith raised him up. Faith raised him up. Faith raised him up. He believed. He, did he not, what was he saying throughout his life? He was going to go through the cross. He's going to die. He's going to rise the third day. Why do you think he's saying that he's going to be in the ground for three days? And he just kept saying it. He just kept saying it. He believed it. God believed it. Everybody else believed it. Except the devil didn't. That's why he put God out there. He didn't believe it. He don't have no faith. Not the kind you and me got. It's faith. It, it, there was no zapping. We thought we, God just zapped Jesus out of the ground. No. It was sure faith. And he, he released his faith on the earth and then died believing that his faith was going to raise them up. And it did. Wow. It wasn't no, it wasn't no what if it don't work. Because it, it, it had been left up to the devil, it wouldn't have worked. But it wasn't up to the devil. See, that's proof right there that your faith overrides every Amen. devil that there is. Amen. He, he could not stop that resurrection. Because that resurrection is tied to faith. Yes. Faith that he released out of his mouth. That's why I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what it smells like. Amen. I don't care what it tastes like. You better hold fast to your Amen. confession. Because yes. yes. the job is getting done. Yes. And Jesus believed, he believed that he was going to rise from the dead to the point where he allowed them to take his life, believing that he was going to be raised from Amen. the dead. Amen. God, that's faith. That's faith. That's faith. That's faith. God loves it. And so, isn't it, doesn't it make good sense that if he loves faith that like that, that he himself lives by the same faith? He lives, he lives by faith. So, so what is God's faith? Faith is whatever will you say. You tell God you love him? Dear God, he believes that. God believes that. Amen. You tell God, I, God I, my life is totally sold out to you. I surrender to you. All I want to do is whatever you want. He believes that. His faith. God's faith. Take hold to that. Oh, yes. And then we got faith to faith. God, you can get Amen. something done. God. And you got faith on oh, both sides of the bridge. Both sides. Both sides. Faith coming from the uh, natural arena. Faith coming from the spirit arena. A wow. devil don't stand a chance. Devil don't stand a chance. But none of this is going to work unless you take hold to the fact that death has been abolished. It won't work. It won't, you, 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 you won't work. Because the fear, the fear, what is it? What, what faith's enemy is what? Fear, we know that. And if the fear of death is still at work in you, I don't think so. So you got to you got to take hold of this. You got to take hold to this. You got to take hold to. It. I'm telling you, and, and and so see. This this is so important for us to teach this, because so much much of the church is still in bond and bound to fear, of death. You got to know you got to know this. This this is an important subject. We, 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 you can't be in fear and faith. They don't, they don't, they do not cohabit. Fear and faith do not cohabit together. 
Now listen, I'm going to read this again. Inasmuch then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same, for, so that death, that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death. That is the devil. So there ain't no question about who he was. Wow. And he did something else. Released. Jesus released those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. This is, this is in Hebrews, Hebrews 2, 14 and 15. Now, now, Let's get a hold of this. If you don't believe that death has been abolished, then death will work in you. Because death is lawless. It, 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 it doesn't care. It, it, death itself is of the devil. He, he, he has no class. He is, he's a stump. He, don't, he, 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 he doesn't have no, 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 no intelligence, no, no, no wits about it. If you don't know and exercise your authority over that fear of death, it will, he'll crush you. Even though he, has, it's, he is abolished. He is outlawed. So what does an outlaw care about being outlawed? You get that? He is an outlaw. He don't care if he is outlawed. He will still work if you let him. God has outlawed death. But what is, death is an outlaw. He's an outlaw. He's a criminal. He's an outlaw. So what does he care? You understand what we're talking about here? He doesn't care. See, we thought just by virtue of the fact that he's been abolished, we thought he could, wouldn't do nothing to you. Okay, you better wake up. And he's doing it. And, and that's why he, he's, doing it. he's doing it to the church. I, 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 I tell you, it's, I, I, it's there's very little difference between believers and unbelievers Amen. when it comes to death. Amen. Amen. And it, it's the truth. I, and, and I know, and we always, and I know how we, I know who we, I know, listen, I know this is treading on down to, to dangerous, I know I'm treading on dangerous ground, I know it, but I don't care. Because it's the truth. I, I, as long as I'm with the Bible, I really don't care. Amen. God wants us to be free from the... He, um, and, and the way that you're going to be free from it is be taught the truth. Right. Death is an enemy. Yes, it is. And it's been abolished by Jesus. Yes. It, is, it, it, it no more has a legal right to bind you. But he will do it if you don't know. God said, My people suffer and they suffer because of the lack of knowledge. They don't know. It's just, you know, just. So, so what does this do? Well, now that you know the truth, you're going to have to just change the way you think. Now, now you're going to have an opportunity to just kick up everybody else. I'm going to tell you right now, you can walk right out of here. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to be honest with you, just as honest as you can be. You can walk right out of here, and somebody say, you know, so and so, so dead, and you're like, just like you always did, if you don't make a decision to change your mind. Right. 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 I'm going to tell you right now, I, I, know what I'm, I know what I'm talking about. I know, I know. There's just something you want to just want to get him. But I want to be free. Amen. Now, many times... Once you begin, once you make some decisions internally yourself and your mind begin to change and your conduct begin to alter, people will watch you. They'll watch you. I, I know, I know, I know. Because watch this, that's a watch this, watch this. If some death news show up and the person that brings it Many times you'll act almost like the, the, the person that brings the news can determine how you'll re respond. If you give the news like it's normally given, and you down there with you down in here, down in there, they coming right down there with you. 
But uh, if you have a different demeanor, they'll give you one or two things. They'll get mad at you and go on down there, or they won't go down. They'll stay up there with you. They'll do one or two things. Now, now I, I know I'm, I know what I'm talking about because I, you know, I, 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 I uh, you know, uh, I, I have to. I, I'm, I'm a chaplain. I'm a police chaplain. So when they, when they die, they call me. And folks die, they want me to go tell them that somebody did. So, and I have to, you know, and they, the way they train you to do that, just, just go. Don't 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 take no short, no no shortcut. Just go straight to the to the source and tell them. You know what I mean? But they'll they'll kind of respond the way you where you are. You know what I mean? But they expect the preacher. They expect him to be tough anyway. So I don't know. But 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 just in general, I'm telling you, people will t- many times respond the way you are. And there's a way to do things, and God will give you wisdom on how to do things, and 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 release the the blow of the because. It, it, the death wants, it wants all it can get. It wants all it can get. It wants to crush people. It wants to crush people. But, but now that you're knowing the truth, because the truth, now, when you're dealing with people that don't know Jesus, it's a whole nother ball game. It's a whole nother ball game. It's a different ball game altogether. Because now they only, they only know natural, and you, you, you stuck, you stuck there. And the best thing you do is just do whatever you do and get on out of there. You know, but because they don't know nothing else. But then the scripture tells us that we don't grieve like those that have no hope. I, I don't know why we ignore that. But, but my point in all of this, it should work in us to transform us and change us. Now, let me finish reading this, reading this here before, before we shut it down here. Over here in Philippians. Back to Philippians uh, 121, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. But if I live on in the flesh, this will mean fruits from my labor. Yet what I shall choose, what I shall choose, get that. Now, you need to underline what I should choose because not, you, you understand that you got something to say about this. Scripturally, <clears throat> I cannot tell. For I'm in a hard press between the two. Watch this having a desire to depart and be with Christ, which is far better. Yes. You get the language? Look at the language that God yes, used. To, to, for my spirit to separate from my body, to, for me, it's much better. I'm better off. Well, if I'm kicking and cutting up and you better off, whoa, that don't match. I'm tickled and you crying. Who are you crying for? Not for me. That's, that's your doing. That's for, you, for yourself. It's you. It's for you. Right, right. Then you cry. If you're crying, you can cry because you still left here. <laughs> you cry. You can cry about that. So you left me here. But just cry because they're gone. No, 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 no. Don't cry because they're gone. Now I'm talking. I'm, I'm talking about believers now. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not talking about unbelievers. Unbelievers is a whole different ball game. But scripture, you believe the Bible. Now we believe the Bible, right? You believe the Bible. You believe the Bible. Everybody in here believe the Bible. Yes. For I'm hard pressed between the two, having a desire to depart, having a desire, having a desire. Now he's talking about himself. I won't go. Now, here's something that I've learned. Here's something that I have learned. I have learned this as a pastor. I've learned this. When I'm around people that's, that's near in departure, I always go with whatever they want. I don't, go to, I don't just go to, go, to, go to praying, go to praying and hollering and carrying on around people, and they don't even want to do that. And I've had several people to tell me that they was ready to go. They didn't tell nobody else. I, I, I was just thinking about as much one individual in particular. Come and told me, told me exactly what he wanted to do. He said, I'm ready to bail out of here, but don't t- he, he, don't, he told me confidentially. Amen. Now, I'm telling you, this, this, is, this has happened. Amen. Confidentially told me, listen, I'm ready to get out of here. Because he knew if he'd have said to that crowd, other crowd in there, he wouldn't. <laughs> They'd have been plastered. I'm, 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 I'm telling you, I have had those experiences. 
Nobody knows what that person is dealing with but that individual. So I never, I never go to anybody's bedside as a, as a pastor, as a, as a minister of the gospel. I don't go to nobody's bedside and try to persuade them to do anything. Amen. I go ahead and ask them what they want. Because I don't know what they want. They're, they're ready to go. Paul's ready to go. Do you, see this? Do you see the scripture here? He said, I'm hard pressed between the two. Having a desire, I have a desire to depart and be with Christ. I have a desire. He said, I, I want to go. Wow. Now, why would I go ahead and try to talk him out of it? And go to praying. You're in unbelief anyway. You're not in agreement. You're, in unbe- you're just not in agreement. Now, if they tell me they, well, they, they're not ready to go, now, now I get an agreement to, to keep you here. But, but I'm not going to come there and try to make it. I'll go there. I'll find out. First thing I try to do is find out what they want. I remember one time I went to the hospital to see this individual. And I, had to try, I had to get them a bunch. Of, I, had to get, I, had to, I had to clean the room out. They're just in there, just can't get these. I told them, get them, get them out of here. I said, get them out, get them out. I told them, get them out of here. You know I mean? Because the individual had let me know what they wanted. See? And so we got them out of there. We had to talk to them what they wanted. We even didn't deal with it. And I just sort of get, because they're, they're in unbelief anyway. They're not in faith. They're just frustrated and whatever. They're not in faith, you know. Uh, but, 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 but learn something from the Bible. This is what I'm trying to show you. When you, when it, listen, when come time, when you get ready to leave here, you're not, you 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 are so God-minded, you don't see nothing back on this side. Amen. I remember, I remember, I was going to bedside with people that was ready to depart. They wouldn't even talk to nobody. They wouldn't even talk. They didn't want to 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 talk earth language. I remember this one individual in particular. I went to the bed, and she would not talk until I started praying. When I started praying in the spirit, she'd kick in and start praying in the spirit with me. She didn't want to talk. She didn't want to talk about nothing on this side. Wow. Your, whole, your, your my whole mindset is totally different. She wouldn't say, she wouldn't talk. Wouldn't talk to the family member, wouldn't talk to nobody. She wouldn't talk to me. And I would start praying, and I started praying in the spirit. Then she'd kick in and start praying in the spirit with me. But she wouldn't, she wouldn't talk. She wouldn't, she wouldn't even pray in, 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 in English. Prayed in the spirit. You know what I mean? She read the bail out of here. I know that. You know what I mean? I was fine with me because I understood it. You follow what I'm saying? See, but, but so, so we need to understand these things because the fear of death robs us and keeps us in bondage and keeps us out of understanding. This is an excellent scripture here for us to meditate over. And then he goes on, he decides to stay. Nevertheless, to remain in the flesh is more needful for you. You know what I mean? So he said, well, I'll stay for, to help you out. I want to I stay and help you out a little bit because you do have concern for other people. Yes. But, but I, the point I wanted to show you is that there's no fear here. Death has been abolished. He's the one that God gave the revelation to pin that death has been abolished. Amen. So you know he ain't scared of nothing. Peter over there, Peter said, I got word already. I'm ready to bail out of here. Yeah. yeah. Ain't nothing sad about that. So let your mind change about this fear thing, fear of death. Death has been abolished. Go to the Word of God and find out what what God is, and then begin to operate and meditate the Word of God and let the Word of God transform and change your mind. It's going to raise the quality of your life. Go ahead, stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Father, we praise you and we thank you so much. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, dear God, that you have taken the sting.